just listening to a 1967 Fender Deluxe Reverb on one side and a modern reissue 2017 Fender Deluxe Reverb on the other side. So before we jump into the rest of the video, I wanna hear which amp you think was the 1967. Was it amp A or amp B? Pause the video, leave a comment below, and then pick it back up. What's going on everyone? I'm Rhett Scholl. Welcome back to another video. Today I am back at Righteous Guitars here in Alpharetta, Georgia to do another vintage modern head-to-head -head video. Today we are comparing apples to apples. We are comparing the 1967 Fender Deluxe Reverb. This is hands down the cleanest vintage deluxe I've ever seen or ever played. And then here we have your standard off-the-shelf modern reissue deluxe reverb. So today we're gonna compare the two amps and figure out if the 67 is worth over twice the price of the modern reissue. 67 just sold for 2,900, and you can pick up one of these modern reissues for about 1,100. So I was just playing this beautiful Fender Custom Shop Tele. I really, really love this guitar. I think this was an, a Winter Nam guitar that Wright just picked up. Just a great, great sounding Tele. So now we're gonna plug in and listen to the 67 by itself, and then we'll go over to the 2017. <laughs> Okay, so I've spent the last 45 minutes or so with these two amps switching back and forth. I've gotten a pretty clear picture of the differences between them, and they really are drastically different amps. So the first thing that immediately pops out to you when you're in the room with these amps is the volume difference. The modern Deluxe is almost twice as loud to my ear 
than the vintage one. I think that has a lot to do with the speaker. In the modern one, it's a Jensen special design. In the vintage one, it's the original Fender speaker. They also break up at different times. The modern one has quite a bit more headroom than the vintage one. I think that's also due to the speaker. That vintage one has had 51 years to break in and loosen up and really wear in. So I think a lot of the breakup that happens earlier with this amp is from the speaker. The other major difference is the modern deluxe has a lot more bass, a lot more low end. In fact, it's pretty overpowering. So up until this point, I've had all of the EQs on the amps set at five. And to be honest, the bass on the modern one is way, way too overpowering. In this small room, it's like almost painful how much bottom end is coming out of this amp. The 67 is much more balanced overall. The frequency response is even. There's not one part of the frequency spectrum that's sticking out. There's not too much bass, not too much mids or highs. It's really balanced. It's a much sweeter sounding amp overall. It's more expressive. To me personally, I find the 67 more inspiring to play. And in, in the time that I've spent in this room with these two amps, I keep wanting to go back to the 57 just because it has a more balanced response, it's got a more balanced tone, it feels better, it sounds better, it's also quieter, which when you're in a small room like this with no hearing protection is a lot better. Now with that being said, I'm honestly a huge fan of the Modern Deluxe, and here's why. For $1,100 brand new, you can have a modern, reliable, great sounding tube amp that will break up It'll give you those classic Fender tones that everyone knows and loves. It works great with pedals. They're super durable. You can beat the crap out of these things on the road and they'll keep going. They have made cost cutting measures to get it down to $1,100, like cheaper components using printed circuit boards instead of point to point hand wired. They're using cheaper speakers, cheaper reverb tanks, cheaper potentiometers. Everything on the modern one is budget minded and production line minded so they can crank out as many of these things at as low a cost as possible. That being said, it still sounds great. For $1,100, you're getting a really solid, reliable, great sounding amp. This 67, because it's super clean and basically museum quality, went for, I think, $2,900 here at Righteous, which honestly, in my opinion, is not a bad price. I was actually trying to buy it for a while, but some viewer here on the channel got to it before I did. So to whoever you are, congratulations, this is a great amp. Uh, and if you ever sell it, DM me. But you're doubling the price for essentially the same amp. Now, obviously, as we've heard, and as I've just talked about, there's quite a big difference between these two amps. You're also getting into a kind of vintage collectible commodity here. This theoretically could increase in value over time, whereas this is gonna depreciate pretty much as soon as you take it out of the store. So is the 67 worth double the price of the modern deluxe? In my mind, it is. You're getting a really cool amp. This particular amp has a great story, a great history. It's in incredible condition. And I do think it sounds twice as good as the modern one. But that being said, don't sleep on these modern deluxes. For an affordable, budget-minded, gigable tube amp, I would recommend checking one out if you don't have one already. Let me know what you think about these two amps in the comments down below. Do you prefer the 67 or the 2017? And do you think the 67 is worth more than twice the price of the brand new amp? Thanks again to Righteous Guitars for letting me come in and shoot today's video. If you're in the Atlanta area, I highly, highly recommend coming to check these guys out. The customer service here at Righteous is really what puts them over the top in my mind. Be sure to check out the links in the description if you want more information on the gear I use to shoot today's video and record the amps. You can also check me out on Instagram at Rhett Scholl. Keep up with what I'm doing in the musical world there. Anyways, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And remember, there is no plan B.